Okay, in this tutorial, we're gonna have a look at how we add a color effect to a clip in Final Cut Pro 10, and then also how we can use keyframing to manage that color effect. We're also gonna have a look at how we can add a blur and keyframe that too, so we can fade to a color, fade to a blur, and then have this image drop back, for instance, behind some titles or behind another video that's framed within the shot. So the first thing we're gonna do is jump into the timeline here. We need to make sure we have our inspector up. We're gonna be using that quite a lot in this particular tutorial. So go to Window, and if you don't see the inspector, just go to show inspector about one third of the way down your menu here. Okay, and then we're gonna bring up the effects browser. Okay, and we're looking at the color effects browsers. Okay, so we have basic kind of black and white colorize and a variety of different effects where we can add in different types of color. Okay, so we're gonna use the black and white effect to start with, and we're gonna look at how we can fade this in. So if we drag this onto the timeline, this will instantly make our clip black and white, but we don't want it to be instantly black and white, we want it to fade to that color. So what we need to do now is have a look up in our inspector. Now when you're looking to animate elements within Final Cut Pro, you need to look at the effect you're using and see if this little diamond shape with the plus inside it pops up. If it does, it means that you can actually animate and keyframe this effect. So the way that we do this is by adding one keyframe, moving to another point in time, and then making an adjustment. And once we've added one keyframe, the second keyframe at a different point in time that we adjust will automatically be added. So we'll just have a look at how this works. So we'll come to about two seconds into our clip here, okay, which is where we want our clip to eventually be black and white. We'll add a keyframe for the amount here, for our black and white amount, okay? And you can see here the amount allows us to change how much we're desaturating our image or making it black and white. We're gonna leave it 100% here and then drop back to the beginning of our timeline. Okay, and at this point, we're gonna drop this down to zero. Okay, so essentially now, our clip from the beginning is gonna to fade to black and white. Okay, and if we wanna modify those keyframes, and this is quite an important point, you wanna make sure that when you're moving between your keyframes that you're actually on the keyframe. So if I start to try and move to where my clip is black and white and make an adjustment, chances are I won't be on the exact spot of the keyframe, okay? So you can end up with a jumpiness in your animation or the animation of your effect if you don't keep an eye on this. So we're gonna use the arrows here to the left here or to the right of our keyframe to edit and modify that, okay? So I'm gonna to go to the second keyframe around two seconds in and just drop this to around 70%, okay? So I'm making it almost black and white. So I'm desaturating the image, but I'm not making it completely black and white. So we're fading and then it's gonna hold around 70%. So once we're almost faded out, so just before two seconds, we're gonna add in some blur for this clip. So I'm gonna to go to the blur menu here, okay? And we're gonna add a, a Gaussian blur. So I just drop this onto my clip. Okay, so once I've added the Gaussian blur, you can see that my Gaussian blur effect pops up here just below black and white. And you can reorder these effects. It's not too important for this particular effect, but for some it does matter. Um, and basically what I'm gonna do is just before two seconds, I'm gonna have no blur. And then just as my clip fades to its desaturated state, I'm then gonna to start to blur out my image. So at the moment, I'm gonna set a keyframe here just before two seconds. And then I'm gonna drop the amount of blur to zero. Okay, so I have no Gaussian blur there at the moment. And then if I come ahead in time, to around two and a half seconds, I'm now gonna increase my blur, okay? And you can see I've got some other options for horizontal and vertical blur, but I'm not gonna play with those at the moment. So you can see what will happen here now, and this little yellow diamond indicates that I'm on a keyframe. So we can see now what happens when I play through is that my clip drops its saturation and then blurs around about the same time, but just a, one a little after the other, okay? So you get this nice effect. If we hold down control on our clip here and jump to show video animation or control and V, then we're gonna show the elements that are animated within our clip here. So I'll just scroll up here a little and you can see I've got the black and white and Gaussian blur showing there. Okay, so now I can move these keyframes here in time. Okay, I can right click on them to delete them, but I've got a nice level of control for this type of animation within Final Cut Pro 10. And you can see also I've got my other options down here for transform, for trim, and for distorting my clips as well. So I can manage and edit my keyframes quite nicely here within Final Cut Pro 10. Okay, so let's play that through one last time. And you can see now I've modified my animation a little bit to take a little longer to happen, blurs out, desaturates, and that's kind of the effect I'm looking for. So I'm gonna stop that there. 
I hope that's been a useful introduction into keyframing and working with keyframes in Final Cut Pro 10. There's a lot of powerful work you can do with motion graphics and animation within Final Cut Pro 10 before you require the need for applications like motion and it's definitely worth exploring the effects browser and also the motion tools that you have available here to change the scale rotate and animate those elements within final cut pro 10 i hope you found this tutorial useful and i look forward to seeing you on the next one